Hello everybody. Today we're going to calibrate the AHAR system, most notably the heading indicator and the fuel flow. So let's start up the engine. I have two fuel pumps. One is controlled by the ECU and the other one is controlled by the switch. The first fuel pump which is controlled by the ECU is actually used to prime it as you can see here. It runs for about 15 seconds to get a build up fuel pressure and to prime the engine. After start I set the engine to 1000 RPM and check the oil pressure. I found that the oil pressure is climbing rapidly if the oil is cold, but if you start it later when the engine is hot, actually oil pressure is much lower. I ask this with the oil power and they say this is uh, normal, so that's uh, not a problem. So this is actually the first flight I fly solo in my uh, airplane. In the previous three flights, which were all test flights, um, I was supported by a retired Dutch Air Force pilot who has a lot of experience with the RV-7 on tailwheel. So I picked his brain to get the approaches and landings correct. But I think I gained enough experience to now uh, do it myself. And the goal of this flight is actually calibrating the heading indicator, which is actually the MGL SP6 magnetometer, which is the sensor that is um, measuring the heading readings. It's a kind of an electronic compass, and you need to calibrate it in flight. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm taxiing up to the run up area. The wind is moderate, we're about uh, 12 knots, but it's really straight over the runway, so there's uh, almost no crosswind component. It's also the first time I got my onboard camera working. I mounted them in the first flights, but somehow I screwed up, so there was no onboard video. The audio is still uh, crappy, so uh, I'll just keep that as a background noise. I'm working on it to get my cockpit audio correct. Because of the injection engine you don't have a carb heat, so you only need to check the, um, the ignition coils and the propeller. Because it's a constant speed propeller you need to uh, check the, uh, the pitch. So the run up is uh, quick. The problem is that the engine is uh, in these cold days, it's not very warm yet, so I just wait a little longer to get my uh, oil temperature at least above the uh, 40 uh, degrees centigrade. The fuel flow is not going to be calibrated in flight, but I will do that after the flight because then the engine is warm and I uh, can connect the laptop to the ECU. Currently my K factor of the fuel flow is too low. I set it according to the uh, manuals, but apparently that's too low for the UL power in combination with the MGL RDAC. So we need to calibrate it because now it says that it would run on idle. It will use over 8 liters per hour, which is ludicrous when climbing, full throttle. It says it uses 50 liters per hour, which is insane. So I need a different K factor and it turns out it was over 10,000 actually. All my projections were almost a factor 3 too high. Okay, checking base. There's one plane on final, so I'll have to wait for that one. One on final is actually a sports cruiser. Uh, it's the one of the of the flying club here in uh, Teuge, and it's uh, one I also uh, flew. Okay, the cruiser vacated the runway and there is no traffic on base so let's line up. I will turn up the uh, engine volume a little bit so you can uh, enjoy the growling sound of the UL power engine.
climbing to 2500 feet uh, in order to get some space for doing the heading indicator calibration. To calibrate the heading indicator you need to make uh, turns at different bank angles uh, um, and while you're turning the magnetometer kind of finds its track I guess I'm not sure how it does it anyway it, you can see on the display that um, if it collected enough measurements then uh, it gives you a signal and then you uh, need to keep on turning and then in the end it will just calibrate it itself so there's nothing it's, it's kind of an automated process you just need to bank at different angles uh, and if possible with different pitches so that's what I do in the end it turned out that I didn't do it correctly so I probably have to uh, plan another flight to uh, to calibrate the magnetometer I, do I don't know where I screwed up actually but well somehow if you're flying you cannot really uh, you cannot do two things right I can't, probably the next time I'll I'll take someone with me who can read the procedures on how to uh, how to calibrate the magnetometer and me do the flying because doing those things at the same time yeah that's not that's probably not a, a very good idea Okay, heading to Shera, which is the uh, entry point for the Turku circuit. It's close to the A1, which is the main east-west highway in the Netherlands. So descending to circuit altitude, which is uh, 700 feet. The engine uh, really runs very nice. It runs on uh, MoGas. Uh, Euro 98. I try to limit the amount of ethanol in it, so there are special fuel stations that guarantee kind of a zero or at least a very limited amount of ethanol, which is better because ethanol is hygroscopical, so it will attract water, which is not a very good thing. I'm still not used to the high RPMs of the UL power, so normally if you're on a, on a downwind with the Cessna, you would probably set it something like 2000 RPM, but here you need to set it to uh, at least 2300. Uh, so for me that's, uh, well, getting used to. In the canopy you can see the reflection of the three LEDs indicating that I have switched on both fuel pumps and the ECU so there are not many lights on my panel but the essential ones are there so I can see which fuel pumps are on and if the ECU is on for both takeoff and landing I'll switch on both fuel pumps in case if one fails then at least I've got a, another one so for now during test flights I use the following speeds on downwind I try to get it to 85 knots on base 75 and when I'm going to turn to final I want to set it to 65 with well about 30 flaps uh, I don't use full flaps yet uh, also not with this wind and uh, I keep the speeds maybe a little high but well for now that's, uh, that's good enough aiming for the numbers I'm not sure, I still think I feel a little main wheel shimmy. I'll, I'll try to get a, an external camera on it. Uh, I've attached wooden rods uh, at the um, landing gear, which is according to the manual fence, it's an, it's an optional thing to prevent wheel, uh, wheel shimmy. I did that immediately while building, but 
it looks like I still have shimmy, so <laughs> maybe I should remove them. I'm not sure it's all got to do with resonance. Uh, I'll have to see if it's uh, if it's really bad. Mm, maybe uh, check the forms how to uh, how to solve this. Maybe it's maybe it's not that bad. Maybe it just feels bad. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll have to look into it. Landing the RV7 is actually really easy. Uh, it, it feels almost easier than a, than a cup. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's maybe it's the weight. I'm, I'm not sure. At least it's it's uh, yeah, it's really easy. It flies. It flies and lands really really nice. Um. So taxiing back to the hangar. Next up is inserting the laptop so I can connect directly to the ECU and calibrate the uh, fuel flow. This actually worked, so uh, I have now at least uh, correct fuel flow settings. And next time I can look into the performance figures of the uh, UL Power, Air Master, Prop and the RV7. Okay, continuing flying my pie in the sky.